What's up guys, so today I'm going to make a home server and this is a gaming desktop actually but I'm going to repurpose it because it has the perfect specs for what I wanted to do. So we're going to make this home server and put it right here and it's going to be connected to the network and basically what we're going to do is share the hard drives as kind of like a NAS to the rest of the house. And another thing I want to do is I kind of want to make this into a general workstation slash game server as well since it does have a 980 in it and a 5820K. So we're going to see how all that goes. I got Windows Server 2019 and I'm going to install it on here. I got the license for my school so that's perfect. So with that with that said, it's going to be kind of a long video. Check the timestamps in the description if you don't want to you know, see the whole process. But we're going to go through everything. We're going to open this up, put the hard drives in, install Windows Server, install everything. This is my first time doing this, so I actually have no idea what I'm doing. But let's go ahead and see. So first thing is this hard drive. Uh, this is an enclosure. It's a Seagate Backup Plus. It's a piece of crap. So we're going to take up the drive. This is a 3 terabyte drive, so... We're going to take it out of here and put it on the computer because I don't trust this little enclosure. It's pretty good. Alright, so we have these little enclosures that we're going to do this on. So one good thing about this computer is it has a bunch of hard drive slots. This is another one that's going to go right here. So it's perfect and there's actually three fans in the front, 120 millimeter each. So the hard drives will stay cool. And this is an X99 chipset computer so it's kind of like perfect for this type of job. So helping with all this is our guest star Mangix. Yes. And we're going to hopefully try and finish this before he leaves. Yeah, gotta tighten them. Hard drives are really sensitive to vibrations. Even if you yell at them, performance goes down. <laughs> Alright, it's not the best kill management, but down here, we have a brand new 120 gigabyte HP SSD for the OS. And then we have the 1 terabyte Western Digital Black, 2 terabyte Toshiba, and 3 terabyte Seagate. Yes, 1, 2, 3. That was actually accidental. So inside the computer, we have a liquid cooler, so it should remain quiet. We have a Zotac GTX 980, which is overkill. And we have our drives with all the fans there. That's how it looks. So let's boot this up and install Windows Server. So we're going to go ahead and start the process of installing Windows Server. So this is going to take a while, so we'll go through the process. Alright, so the SSD is this one. These are the other drives. So we're just going to go ahead and let this install for the next probably 20 minutes, 10 minutes. Let's see how long it takes to install. So we'll come back when this is ready to be installed. Alright, so Windows is ready to be activated. So let me type in my key. Alright guys, so Windows is now activated. And I've gone ahead and installed all the drivers. So we have this eHome, but... I got the network driver installed, which was a real pain in the butt. GTX 980 installed, no issue. So everything's installed. So next step is going to be making this into a workstation style system. I know this is kind of a backwards thing to install server and then turn it back into a workstation. But I like some of the server features and I wanted to also use it as a normal computer sometimes. So we're going to go over all this. Okay, so I've got everything installed. I have the server manager with file services enabled, Office, Chrome, MSI, Steam, MPA, uh, Media Center Classic, and 7-Zip installed. So I installed Hyper-V because I'm having an issue. So I installed Ubuntu because I need to format my three terabyte hard drive. And for some reason, it's not really working correctly in Windows. All right, so that didn't work and I'm trying disk part now and I'm pretty sure disk parts also gonna fail I'm starting to have a feeling that this hard drive is actually dying so let's see all right so I lost my camera man but the three terabyte Seagate is dying so we're gonna remove this crap and the reason I think it's dying is because I cannot get it to format and I even tried Linux and even Linux I'm getting 
read write input output errors so this thing's coming up for now I'm gonna get a different drive later but these two should be enough for a terabyte storage each first we're gonna go ahead and set up the virtual drive that's gonna basically hold everything so let's create the storage pool and this is basically gonna make our little disk that consists of the other physical disks now make sure you're drives are unformatted when you do this because mine were formatted and they weren't showing up so now they show up so let's see everything looks good so let's create this okay so like I said this is my first time doing all this so let me just take a look at where to go uh, hmm Okay, let's see, new volume. No, that doesn't make any sense. Okay, I have to go back here. Here we go. So this looks right. Okay, so we're gonna select this and make our virtual disk. This is gonna be, I'll just call this the same thing. Put a little description in. I don't think that's needed, but just in case. Okay, so next. And next, okay, so here we're gonna do mirror because I want it to be like a RAID 1 type of setup where if one drive fails, I still have my data. I'm gonna do fixed uh, max amount. I don't know if I'm screwing myself over doing fixed, we'll see. All right, let this do it. Okay, cool. So it looks like the virtual disk has been made. So now we need to format the virtual disk, I'm assuming. Let's see, yep. Okay, so letter D is fine. And I'm gonna use ReFS because I believe it's better than NTFS. And in this environment, it's probably gonna be better as well. So everything looks correct, finish. Hmm, I hope I didn't do this twice. Looks the same. Okay, so now we have our drive here. One terabyte. And it's like that because of the RAID 1 style setup. Okay, so next we're gonna make the share. So here we make the share so every other computer on the network can access the files. Okay, I'm going to do simple, and here we just select our new drive. Okay, this is the third time I'm entering the same information. Well, technically not the same information, but you know. You know what I mean. I'll just call it HDD. Uh, there we go. Okay. Uh, everything looks good cool so now there's one more thing that needs to be done and that's the permissions uh, I think I changed it here yeah so here we need to add the administrator otherwise you're not gonna be able to write to the disk from the remote location so I just need to figure out how to add the administrator hmm Nope. Oh, there we go. Perfect. This probably is it. Yep. Uh, first one. Okay. So the administrator is added. So now I'm going to give it full control. Okay. And click OK. All right. So that should now allow us to write to the disk. So we have the share and let's see okay let's go to the computer all right guys so we're gonna go ahead and try out the alienware all right guys so we're gonna go ahead and add the network location from the server on this laptop so let's see if i remember correctly the name and everything that goes hdd Click next. OK. 
Okay, and what the heck? Let's try this again. Looks correct. Let me do it. Let me try one more time. Ah, of course this time it works. That's funny how that works. Can you guys see my password? No, you can't. All right, good. Remember location. Let's hope this works. Yes, it did. Let me make this capital. OCD's kicking in a little bit. Okay. Open location. All right. So this is technically where that hard drive is. So, yep, this is the only folder. So let's make something here. How about a text document? And let's just put test and type test and go check the other computer to see if this is on the drive now. All right. All right, guys. So let's take a look and see if the file is here. Um, okay, there we go. Okay, looks like it's here. Open it up to make sure, and yep. Alright, so that was successful. So let's make a file here on this just to see if I can write. And it looks like I can. Perfect. Alright, next step. Alright, so now we're just going to check to make sure Steam's remote play is working. So let's just make sure it's checked. And it is. So let's test it. So obviously, this laptop isn't really one that needs to stream games so let's go ahead and grab something that really can't game like this little Dell Latitude let's just game on this and just see how this is because uh that laptop can already game so let's use this all right guys so we're gonna go ahead and launch Steam and as you can see, it says stream from CS server. So let's see if this works. You're about to play. Okay. Okay, so it looks like we need to install some drivers under the computer. So apparently it was this audio driver that needs to be installed. So we're gonna go ahead and install this and then head back to the other laptop. Okay, let's see third time the charm. Okay. So, this is actually running on the other computer and it's actually running 1080p, so. Okay, it looks like everything's working. Okay. So, let's see if you can see this. Let's see if I can make this more. When I move. There's like a small amount of input lag. But, other than that, it's pretty smooth. It's running at 60 FPS. It's not a super demanding game, but just wanted to point that out. So, looks like it's successful. So one thing I wanted to show was I'm gaming here on this laptop and if we head back to this laptop you'll notice that I can still access everything and I can even make an Excel and that's all on the same computer that I'm gaming on so that's really nice. Alright, so we're finally on the last step, remote desktop. So this one's pretty simple. We're just going to go into the settings and we're going to enable remote desktop. Okay, add the user, admin already has account. Alright, perfect. Let's test this. So the next thing I want to test is the remote desktop connection. So let's go ahead and try this out and see what happens. So I'm going to input the IP. I think this was it. Yep. Okay. Let's type this in. Okay. Yes. All right. So this is actually the server. And it's running pretty good. There's the server so you guys can see. I'm not joking around. This is actually the server. Cool, so we have basically everything I wanted to make remotely accessible work. Alright guys, it is 1.30am right now, so 
finally done with everything. If you've came this far, thanks for watching. If you have any questions about any of these things, let me know in the comments. And as always, subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one. Alright, so let's try this again. And it froze. Nice.